Thank you, Engage and Praxis, for uh, calling me here today. And uh, uh, I look forward to uh, uh, scintillating two days. We uh, have three excellent speakers today in our session. So I'll ask everybody to stay on and keep our TRPs up for panel one. <laughs> Uh, the topic that we are going to all be discussing today is conserving humanitarian heritage. And in that, we are going to be exploring two broad subjects. One is whose heritage is it anyways? And the second, what is the role of the catalyst? Whoever is supporting the communities, how do they help these communities in taking their own heritage forward? So to explain the um, intricacies of these two themes, I'll start with a story. This is a story of the pastoral communities of the Banni grasslands, a part of the integrated Sindh region that was bifurcated into India and Pakistan in 1947. The Banni is an uh, integrated grassland ecosystem of 2,500 square kilometers, wherein the cows and buffaloes herders roam freely, freely following the ebbs and flows of the uh, biodiversity, biodiverse grasses that uh, grow over here. For 500 years, they have maintained and developed a sophisticated culture of use of rights and customary laws uh, based on the commons. They believe they must follow their animals and no human must interfere in this path for they follow the path set by God. The culture of the commons has proved to be rewarding within uh, wherein they have uh, genetically developed uh, some of the most resilient and productive animals called the Vadhyari cattle and the Banni buffaloes, now recognized by the National Bureau of Animal Genetic Resources. Alongside, they have evolved a range of cultural practices that reinforce their faith in nature, in one another, and in God. However, the increasing pressure of industrialization, the non-cooperation of the forest department, and with whom the Banni rest today, and the political pressures has over the past decade created insecurities and fissures internally amongst the community of the confidence that they will be able to pursue such a life and culture of the commons so alien to the present political dispensation and the market economies. This insecurity has led to many of their own members resorting to cordoning off parts of the grassland and farming there. This has resulted in major tensions amongst the community. The community elders approached the organization called Sejivan to help them resolve this issue. On uh, facilitating several internal discussions within the community, the NGO and the elders realized that the community agreed that they were breaking from tradition at their own peril, but saw no other recourse. The elders suggested that the forest department hand over the management of Banni to the community so that everyone felt secure to continue their heritage of free grazing the commons. A progressive legal provision of the Forest Rights Act was systematically applied for by the community, which gives rights and responsibilities of maintaining the grasslands as the commons. However, the political parties will, would not have such a large area be given over for control to the minority communities in, the, in, India, in India. Finally, the elders suggested that take, they take themselves and the government to court for breaking from tradition and destroying their ecosystem. The highest court of the country, the National Green Tribunal set up by the Supreme Court, accepted the petition. And the judge was extremely amused to see that a community had come to put a case on themselves to help them save their own heritage. And they are holding the state now and the government responsible for going against the laws of the land and therefore destroying a heritage and a culture of the commons. It raises the key question, whose heritage is it anyways? And how are, you know, there are two types of borders that we have created. One is, of course, the physical geographical borders between countries. But the second big border that we are constantly having to confront, which uh, Mr. Rao earlier also was talking about, is the market economy itself, which only looks at products, does not look at the process. And most of our heritage, most of our cultural practices have given equal importance to the entire process of developing a product, whether it be a building or a craft or anything else, as something that reinforces your relationship 
with each other and with nature. And so I'll give you a small story again. Uh, is the same pastoral communities have a relationship with the Khatris of this region uh, who developed this beautiful textile called Ajrak. Ajrak is a textile dyed in seven steps, a very intricate process of red, blue, and black patterns. Each Khatri family is responsible for making uh, and uh, representing and, and uh, the requirements of Ajrak for about 10 to 15 pastoral families. No marriage of a pastoral community is ever complete without Ajrak being presented. However, in the two or three decades, uh, this relationship has broken as the pastoral economies suffered and the government and NGOs found markets for the Khatris in Delhi and abroad. Khamir, a craft NGO, got the pastoralist older generation and the young Khatris to dialogue over their traditional relationship. The pastoralist elders blamed the new generation of Khatris of deteriorating the craft quality for an urban, uneducated market that did not understand the significance of Ajrak. The Khatris agreed that while they must that they made good money, they, the broken relationships with the pastoralists took away the soul of the cultural practice of making Ajrak. The pastoralists, whose economy has revived now, offered a reuniting of their relationship on condition that they improve the quality of their Ajrak. So the role of the catalyst in this case, the NGO, is not only to look at the product and help them improve their economies, but actually look at the process itself of developing relationships between people. So uh, this is essentially the basic theme of our panel today. And uh, we will encourage the speakers and the listeners to give ideas with, uh, of how to develop new frameworks of future conservation and new methodologies to preserve and conserve these traditions. So we have uh, three panelists now, and uh, uh, Dr. May, Muzaffar, uh, and uh